For this week, we are mending three pair of jeans and I have been whoring these pairs. Number one is a really bad rip pairs. First, I changed my sewing foot to a darning foot and then I tried to switch my machine so that I could darn, but then I realized it didn't work. So I tried to repair it. As you can see here, when we put the sewing machine in darning mode, which means pressing this lever button downward towards the bottom of the sewing machine, this metal bar is supposed to pop towards the upper part of the sewing machines. However, it is really stuck. So I lubricated with some sewing machines oil and that didn't work. I gave it a WD-40 a shot and that didn't work also. I also tried hammering it as well as blow drying it with my hair blow dryers and that didn't work. So I re-lubricate everything back to normal, change out my darning pressure feet and put back my zigzag pressure feet. This is really the only pressure feet you really need. This first pair of jeans is mine and it has a really bad rips. So this is how I'm gonna fix it. The first thing is I'm gonna use SF101 interfacing to give it a little structure as well as use the darkest fabric I have to cover up the hole. I cut it down to size that is big enough and not too small to cover up the hole and then attach the interfacing to the fabric. After that, I then insert the fabric inside the jeans to prevent wrinkles or fabric bunching up in one spot. I iron the textures of the jean as well. As you can see, the blue fabric does so true where the hole is, but after many, it will not be there. I went ahead and draw a frame around where I will be mending and pin it in place. For the third color, I decided to go with black. Do you sew on a vintage sewing machines? If you do, leave me a comment and let me what your make and model is because I love vintage sewing machines. After everything is set to go, I start sewing and built a little rectangle frame around the hole. Once the rectangle frame is built, I cut away the excess amount of fabric and determine the fabric thread directions. And now to the fun part, sewing back and forth for a million times. <laughs> Of course, nothing go as planned. I got fabric bundling up in the one corner. This happens because I didn't stretch out my jeans when I was sewing the frame. And so that requires some sim ripping. And after sim ripping and that all fixed, I went back to my sewing back and forth a million times. To cover off the blue fabric, I'm going to do a couple stitches in the opposite direction of the jean thread and then finish it off in the same direction as the jeans thread. And now you can't even tell there was a blue fabric underneath that. The opposite side of the jeans also have a spot where it starts to rip. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do SF101 since it hasn't ripped yet. After I finished both sides, I went ahead and trimmed away any excess fabric as well as clean up around the edges and here's the finished products. I decided to give darning a try on my other sewing machines and boy was that an adventure. Wherever I darn, all the thread bundle up and wherever I sew with the reverse and forward mode, it was perfect. Now onto the second pair of jeans. Can you guess who pair of jeans this is? The rip hole is not as bad as my previous pair of jeans, so I just gonna go ahead and use only SF101 and repeat the whole process again a million times. I was sewing the jeans and then I realized that the spot where it rips was all crunching up and it's not going with the flow of the fabric. So I'm gonna have to seam ripped just to make it perfect. Although you don't really quite need to do that, but to make it look professional, I want to try my best to get that nice flow on the fabric. But let me show you what I mean. If you look right here, you can see that the fabric is bundling up right where the rip line is and it's supposed to go naturally with the flow like this part and I think this is because earlier I was trying to seal this hole so I did a stitch across this way multiple stitch now that I turn the jean inside out let me show you what I mean so earlier we did a big zigzag here just to hold the rip location in place 
But then what I went ahead and did afterward is I tried to do a multiple stitch the opposite directions just so to close that gap. But what I didn't realize is this part caused the thread to kind of bundle up. And look how beautiful that is. Although I have to say, I wish I had took out that black thread at the ripped spots because you can kind of see it's kind of visible where the rip was. Sadly, I only have enough time to do two pair of jeans this week. Here are some tips I learned from mending these jeans. Number one, start with a frame. This will guide you to where to start and end your stitches. Number two, hold the ribs in place with wide zigzag stitch. This will make it easier for you to sew over the rift spot. Number three, trim away any fabric frays. Number four, iron to hold the fray in place at the rip location. Number five, use interfacing, such as SF101, for structure and iron on the inside of the jeans. Number six, if your iron has it, use steam to attach the interfacing. I hope you have fun uh, learning how to mend these jeans with me this week. It's definitely something I'm not very familiar with or an expert in, and I had a lot of fun learning about it. Um, let's see. I am more comfortable with making bags. I have not used a darning machines. As you can see, there's a couple of times where I try to darn and I can't. I can't control the speed of the needle at the same time as when I push the fabric through. So that definitely needs some practice. And as well as, um, I also learned that if you don't have darning on your sewing machines, you could definitely use the reverse and the forward button. Well, I hope that you have a fun time watching me mending these jeans and hopefully it inspire you to do some fun sewing projects. Let me know what projects you are currently working on. Leave me a comment down below. And as always, happy sewing.